All right, welcome to L.A. Rams Central. I'm your host, Anthony Manna, and this is my soon-to-be-modified humble adobe. A couple things I want to go over that I haven't done so far. Back there are my pennants. That's a picture of the snow bowl between the um, Fighting Irish and the Penn State Nittany Lions. Rams up top. Dad's military picture with my mom when they were married over there. And back here, I will eventually have some posters, Ram posters, and some Sports Illustrated Super Bowl uh, covers that will be up there as well. So really excited for all of that. So here it is, my 13th episode. I'm actually really excited about this show. Um, I'll give you a quick breakdown on what we're going to do. The first thing we're going to do today is I'm going to cover the rest of the team's free agent moves and what that means for them going into the draft. Then, the second part of the show, I'm going to divulge into what I think the Rams should do, and I'm going to reveal who I think the Rams should draft and why. Um, and then, because I've been on the cuff, is it Goff, is it Wentz? I've been okay with either one, but I'm going to make a decision because that's what they're paying me the big bucks to do. By big bucks, I mean zero-dollar bills. They're not paying me for this. But you, the fans, deserve better, so I should probably give you it. So I'm going to give that, and then I'm going to do my mock draft in the third installment. And I'm just going to do a little bit of talking about each team as I do the mock draft. Um, might be something as simple as, look, this is what they need, this is what they're going to do, and move on. So I hope you guys enjoy today's show. Um, enjoy it, because I am I know I'm going to. Okay, so here we go. Uh, it's going to be a little bit of a read list, so let me just talk about a couple of things. The Washington Redskins we've covered uh, a couple of times, actually, now. So I'm not going to go into too much Washington. Uh, if you're a Cowboy fan, go to ESPN. Go to the network. Go to the radio station because you got your coverage. I'm not covering it. So let's jump into the New York Giants. So a lot of people have been saying that the New York Giants free agent moves were outstanding and out of this world and phenomenal and wonderful and spectacular. And I'm scratching my head a little bit on that because when I look at a couple of their signings that they're really, you know, hot and excited about, Olivier Vernon had one good year, got a big payout that the Giants overpaid him for. One, um, Jason Pierre-Paul, to me, he's done. The hand injury is going to end up being what ended his career. So I think they overpaid him for a product that isn't going to put out. So we'll wait and see with Oliver Vernon, Olivier Vernon, but I'm definitely not impressed with Juan Pierre. Janoris Jenkins? Dude, I did a jig when he left the Rams. It's like, no, one, I, no, no, not okay. I don't like him. He's hit or miss. He's inconsistent. So he, they got an average corner. Um, Damon Harris, Keenan Robinson, Jasper Burke, uh, Brick Brinkley, Will Johnson, Ryan Seymour, Dylan Farrell, an offensive lineman, Larry Donnell, the tight end. The only guy they got that I like is a kicker, Josh Brown. The dude has a thunder leg, like Legatron. He can boot it anywhere. So, I mean, that's a good sign. I don't think the Giants are going to be particularly good. I don't think they're going to be particularly bad because I think last year they learned a lot. But they did not address a lot of their problems. And being the king of free agents does not make you the best team in football. And the Giants are going to find that out the hard way. Um, they have a great quarterback in Eli Manning. But other than that, you know, they got Odell Beckham Jr., who's great. But that side of the ball, defense, they're in trouble. And I don't think any of these moves necessarily helped them. They left status quo as, as is on the D-line with Vernon and, and, and Paul. And now they add Janoris Jenkins, which well, maybe he'll do better in New York, but I'm not impressed. Oh, I'll get back to them. Okay. The Philadelphia Eagles. They traded Brian Maxwell, a DB, and Kiko Alonso and their 2016 first-round pick to Miami to move up to the number eight spot. Good move. Moving up in the draft. They had an obvious idea who they wanted to target. But as the Rams and Browns heated up, the Eagles got a little nervous. And they did some more finagling. 
um, where they did that latest blockbuster trade to move up to number two. They also traded DeMarco Murray and a 2016 fourth-round pick to Tennessee um, for their 2016 fourth-round pick. Okay. You traded away one of the best running backs for nothing. But okay. Um, their free agent signings, Brandon Brooks. Rodney McLeod hurts. That's a former Ram. We all loved him. I don't like to see him go, but Philly, really? Okay. Fine. Um, Chase Daniels, they signed him, Ron Brooks, Donald Stevenson, a good lineman. Nolan um, Carroll, Chris Gibbons was garbage with the Rams. You can have that crap. Reuben Randall's not particularly that great. Ryan Mueller, Steven Wisniewski is good. That's going to help their defense or their offensive line. And Matt Tobin. But overall, I think Philadelphia is just as bad now as they were last year. And their quarterback situation is all up in an uproar. And they moved up thinking they were going to get somebody, and I think Cleveland just pulled the wool right over their eyes, which I'll get to that in a minute. So that's it for the NFC East. The NFC South, or North, I'm not doing Green Bay. They get plenty of coverage. The Bears, I thought I covered them, but I'm going to cover some more stuff that they did anyway. They traded Martellus uh, Bennett and a sixth-round pick to New England for a 2016 fourth-round pick. I, I, I think they overpaid for a fourth-round pick. I don't get the logic there. Um, they did do some good signings, though. Danny Trevathan, uh, Bobby Massey, Tracy Porter, Jacquez Rogers, Nick Becton, Sh uh, Shedrick McManus, Mark Maroney, um, Mitch Weirin, Jarrell Freedom, Akeem Hicks, Rob Hauser, Dante Thompson, Chris um, Prasinski, and Sam Acho. Um, also, they got Manny Ramirez, not the baseball player, um, Ted Larson, Omar Bolden and Josh Bellamy. Sam Acho, I'm a big Acho fan. You could say, I'm going to do it. You could say, I'm an Acho, Acho man. I like Sam Acho. I liked him everywhere he's played. That's a nice addition for Chicago. Um, I also like the Tracy Porter move more than the Danny Trevathan. Um, Tracy Porter is a stud defensive back that only makes teams better when he's on them. And kudos to the Bears. The Green Bay Packers I'm not doing for obvious reasons. The Detroit Lions, they lose Calvin Johnson. They did a lot in free agency. But I don't think any of it's really that good. I'll read the laundry list. Um, Walker, Tr uh, Truman Walker, or Tyrum Walker. Ha Haloti Nagata, I thought was a good pickup. That's a re-sign. They had him already. It's good that they kept him. Um, Tavon Wilson, um, Kreisden Butler, Dan or or Orlowski, Jeremy Curley. God, I can't say that guy's name all of a sudden. Um, William Gilbert, Stephen Ridley, Marvin Jones, Stephen Charles, Dan um, Bedemsk. Um, Badomsi, I can't say his name either. Um, Whitehead, Bush, Schwartz, Mulligan, uh, Matthew Mulligan. They probably need the Mulligan on their entire free agent pool. I don't know any of these people. Do you? I don't. I don't claim to know everybody. Comment if any of those names are like, oh, that's a big time sign. Again, I know not. I know. I know. Heloti is a big sign, but that's a re-sign. Anybody else on this name? Anybody else on this list stick out? Their biggest free agent move was the retirement of Calvin Johnson. So I think it's safe to say the Lions are going to be garbage. Minnesota Vikings. Alex Boone guard, Travis Lewis linebacker, Josh Robinson DB, uh, Brian Lion, uh, Lionheart, uh, Emmanuel Lamar, Michael Griffin, Andre Smith was a great sign. Andre Smith, the former Bengals O-lineman. I think they improved their offensive line, but they improved their football team from last year. That's your call as a Viking fan. I don't think you did. But neither did the Rams, if you look at who they signed. The Rams didn't do anything to improve themselves. But the Rams were on the cusp of making the playoffs, and injuries and some good luck, maybe they get in this year. But for the Vikings, you've got people chasing you. You might want to do better. I certainly don't think that's a division champion right there. So now we end with the South. 
or we go to the South. We don't end with the South. Uh, the Carolina Panthers got Gino Gridagaus, um, Gridowski, Paul um, Solai, Brandon Boykin, um, Joe Webb, Trenton Robinson, Michael um, Parlity. The big thing for them is the rescinding of the free agent tag on Josh New Norman. I don't I don't understand why you, they rescinded Josh Norman's tag. I, I don't get it. It's a bad move, and it's going to hurt your football team. It did. Carolina already was, and again, Carolina fans, don't take offense, but you were already the weakest 15-1 team that ever played. That ever played. I would have taken any 15-1 team in history over you. I would have taken every 14-2 team over you. I would have taken every 13-3 team over you, and I would have taken half of the 12-4 teams over you. So you weren't that good to begin with, despite your record. And now you lose your best defensive player. Yeah, I said it. I don't think their linebacker is their best player. Kukli? Okay. He's good. He's not great. Norman was great. That's how you do. I don't think you're going to do very well. The New Orleans Saints. Josh Scobie. Craig Robinson. Kobe Fleener's a big pickup. Nick Fairley's a big pickup. Josh Hill was a decent re-sign. Um, but their biggest free agent move was Sean Payton. Uh, this is why I think the Saints are going to win the division this year. Um, not because I think, I mean, a lot of these, free, Kobe Fleener and Nick Fairley were great signs. They're guys that are going to add depth and they're going to improve their football team. And let's face it, their defense is going to be that bad again. They may still struggle, but they're not going to be that bad again. And as long as Sean Payton's behind calling the controls and, and running that show, Drew Brees and company, they're going to be great. And they're going to continue to excel. And let's see what they get in the draft, which I have a big surprise for them. If you're a Saints fan, you're going to want to hear my mock draft. You're going to go static when you hear who I have you guys get. Uh, hopefully it pans out. Finally, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, Doug Martin was a big sign, obviously. Uh, J.R. Sweezy, defensive back Brent Grimes, that killed me. I want him to go to the Rams. He went there. Josh Robinson, safety Bradley McDonald. Uh, quarterback Dan LaFleur, I never heard of him. Defensive end Jacquez Smith. Wide receiver Russell Shepard. Daryl Smith, the linebacker. Robert Ayers, the defensive end. Chris Conti, the safety. Brian Anger, the punter. Uh, the Bucks definitely improved. Um, I think they improved enough to move up to number two um, in the division. I think they're going to replace Atlanta. Atlanta didn't do anything. There was nothing for me to report. Atlanta and San Francisco, they didn't make any moves that were worth mentioning. So the Falcons stayed the same. The Bucks may have just bumped above them. I think Carolina is going to fall way down. So Tampa could be tough this year. Um, how tough we'll have to wait and see. Second place in that division may very well be, you know, 5-11. and 11. Let's not go crazy here. Finally, the NFC West. The Arizona Cardinals. Drew Stanton, big re-sign. Uh, Kayvon Branch, big, big sign from the Chiefs. Defensive tackle, Josh uh, Morrow. Tight end, um, Iafani Mu, uh, Muma. I don't have it. Tight end, Jermaine Grisham. Guard Evan Mathis was a big re-sign. Chris Johnson was a big re-sign. But their big thing was Chandler Jones. The Arizona sent offensive lineman Jonathan Cooper and a second-round pick in this year's draft to New England for defensive end Chandler Jones. I think that just put New, I just I think that just put Arizona in the, in, in the Super Bowl. Um, they have the quarterback played. I know how bad he played the championship game. I I'm not one of these people that believes in playoff failure and the guy chokes or whatever. He he played poorly. I think he's going to be determined to prove to, to do better, but it's hard to win a game when you're down 35 nothing because your defense can't stop anybody. Chandler Jones improves that defense tremendously. San Francisco did nothing. Um, Seattle did a lot. I don't know how much they did though. Um, Ahadi Rubin, Jeremy Lane, John Ryan, a punter, uh, Jermaine Curse, a wide receiver, not real good. Offensive lineman Bradley Sowell was not better than O'Keefe, O'Keefer, who, who they let go. Um, I've never even heard of Silga, Silga, the defensive tackle that they picked up. Uh, Jamarcus Webb, not better than O'Keefe, O'Keefer, I keep calling him O'Keefe, uh, or Okafer. What am I doing? 
Okafor is who I'm trying to say. Um, Mike Morgan, good sign. I don't know how good, but good. Patrick Lewis, the center. Um, Chris Clemens. Cooper Helfit. Muhammad Cierce, Cierce is a big pickup. Steven Terrell. I mean, they made a lot of moves. But does anybody on that list wow you? They don't wow me. And when you kick, when you add the fact they lost Okafor, they lost Lynch. Maybe their tight end has a better year this year, the guy that was in New Orleans, Graham. But it doesn't look good if you're a Seahawks fan. I'm sorry. I don't mean to be rude or disrespectful, but that's tough. That's a lot to overcome and a whole lot of money spent on a lot of nothing and no name. So that wraps it up, guys. We were able to do it. I don't know how I did it, but I did it. We were able to get through every single team's free agent moves that made them. Uh, if I missed Atlanta's, I'm sorry. I remember there were two teams that didn't make any moves, and I'm pretty sure we covered all the teams that did. I didn't cover the Rams because I talked about them at nauseum. They never did anything that we said they should do with the exception of moving to L.A., obviously, and moving up in the draft. So uh, stay tuned for the second segment where I'm going to unveil who I think the Rams should get with the number one overall pick and why. All right. Guys, this is painful and difficult. Let me one more time reiterate. Jared Goff and Carson Wentz are studs. If I'm wrong, for whatever reason, and the opposite guy is picked than the one I'm going to talk about here, don't bury your head. Don't get angry. Please, Ram Nation or Ramily, I should say, to the Ramily. Don't get caught up in one guy or the other. Because I believe these two are going to be every bit as good and are going to be to this generation what Roger Staubach and Terry Bradshaw were in the 70s. I don't think they're going to put up the numbers that Brady and Manning put up, but certainly comparable to Bradshaw and Staubach. And it's funny because one is very mobile and can do the things that Roger Staubach could do, and the other one could just flat out sling it like Bradshaw could do. Although Bradshaw was more mobile than he was given credit for. It wasn't quite the scrambler as Roger, but mobile nonetheless. I like both of these guys a lot. And it's really been difficult. It's really been difficult. It took till the evening. Well, I've been home since 3.30. I, I, can't, I can't make a decision definitively um, and, and then try to present something. I have to be all in. So I'm pretty much all in here. So I'm going to do two good about each. Jared Goff. You're not going to hear me say NFL ready because I think they're both NFL ready considering the system they're going to run. Jared Goff presents the hometown feel. And I know what that feels like being an Arizona guy. Uh, when Plummer came to Arizona, it was electric. So Goff brings that feel. Coupled with the fact that he's talented as all heck, the Rams really can't lose there. The other thing I like about Goff is... The accuracy. With Wentz, you have a different scenario altogether. You have an animal like we've never seen in a Ram uniform since really Jackie Harris. Yeah, I went there. That was the last really big quarterback we had. Carson presents a lot of positives. He's got the deep ball. He's been under center. He's the film guy. He's going to be a tremendous asset. So who do you go with? It's tough. Well, let me tell you what I did. When I look at Goff and I look at Wentz, I ask myself three questions. Who's more likely to be found in the film room 
at 3 o'clock in the morning between the two? Goff or Wentz? Check for Wentz. Who's the most capable of handling the California environment? Jared Goff. Check. Jared Goff. So what we're talking about here is study habits versus adaptability to the environment. Both are equally important but are in a different plane. NFL ready. You hear this a lot from ESPN. Oh, you know, Wentz is an NFL ready because he only played in 23 games. Dude, shut up. Goff played in 36. Are we really going to go there? Makes that big of a difference? Dude busted his, his, his wrist up. Other guy has a busted up knee. What do you want? I don't want to hear that. NFL ready. How do you determine NFL ready? Games played? Okay. I consider NFL ready running an NFL system. Well, then that's Wentz, not Goff. So Wentz is more NFL ready. So what am I saying? NFL ready. Wentz, Goff, check, check. They're both equally good. Moving on from that stupid one. Accuracy. Oh. I've heard four things about Wentz. I heard from four different people the same thing. Wentz can make all the throws. Wentz can make all the throws. Check Carson Wentz. The other reason I'm putting Wentz in that category is the ability to throw on the run, he's far more accurate than Jared Goff. And he did it far more consistently over his two-and-a-half-year career than Jared Goff did. So I'm going to give him the advantage there. Last thing that I'm going to check. So we have Wentz, Goff, Wentz and Goff, Wentz, right? We talked about film study. We talked about handling the environment, NFL ready, accuracy. What about arm? Well, when I look at arm, I think they're equal. Check, check. So, looking at that, I go and I ask myself this question. What does your gut tell you? Like, if you hear either guy's name called, what does your gut do? With Jared Goff, my gut goes, yes. With Carson Wentz, my gut goes, what that means is simply this. As much as I like Jared Goff, there is no better fit for what the Rams want to do, what the Rams are currently doing, and who he has to throw to. There's no better fit than Carson Wentz. I love Jared Goff. But if I'm the Rams and I'm looking at these players and doing my checklist, I got to draft Carson Wentz with the first overall pick. Now, some of you are cheering. Others of you are booing. Others of you are throwing your hat up and say, it doesn't matter. The Rams are. I don't believe the Rams are going to draft golf. But if they do celebrate in the streets of Los Angeles, but if they do what I think they're going to do and draft Carson Wentz, then you should also celebrate in the streets of Los Angeles. I don't know what the NFL is talking about. The Cleveland Browns made it not so clear that they wanted Wentz. They coached him up at the, at the Senior Bowl. They spent time with him. They devoted a lot of extra time with him in Cleveland. Why would they trade the number two overall pick and leave Carson Wentz to be drafted by somebody else? They're not. What they're doing is they're leaving because they know the Rams are going to draft Wentz which means they don't walk off. 
They never did want gone. Like, I don't understand what the NFL Network and the, and the ESPN and all these people, Casserly and all these people are talking about. The Browns at no point did I ever, did you? Did you ever read that the Browns were talking to Jared Goff? That they were interviewing him? That they were sitting down with him? That they were coaching him up? That they were at his thing? That they went to his... When? When? It was Wentz. Wentz, 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 Wentz. So if the Rams are going to draft Goff, why would the Browns leave the guy they wanted to draft? Why? Because once again, the NFL got it wrong. Like they always do with the Rams. Right? The Rams, they need to go get RG3. No, we don't. Oh, the Rams shouldn't trade up. They don't have enough resources to trade up. Okay, well, we did. And now we got to hear, oh, it's golf. It's definitely golf. It's golf, 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 golf. It's Wentz. I will be shocked if Jared Goff's name is called. I'll be excited. I will do a jig. But I will be shocked. I'll also be happy and do a jig if it's Carson Wentz. If you remember my first draft preview show with Eric, I said Wentz was the guy the Rams need to get. He fits their system best. He's used to turn around hand off. He's used to being under center. He's used to reading down the defense and do the check down, and he does the film study. We need a guy that takes the craft seriously because we haven't had it since Roman Gabriel. No disrespect to Pat Hayden. No disrespect to Vince Ferragamo. I would argue since maybe even Ferragamo because Ferragamo did a lot of homework to beat Dallas Cowboys as often as he did. But let's face it. Ferragamo was busy with other things too. Gabriel, from everything I've read, was kind of a hermit. That's kind of the guy Wentz is. So, you're asking me, because it's been asked, I think the Rams should draft Carson Wentz. Who do I like better? Six in one, half a dozen in the other. I'm fine with both. But I believe, and I feel, that Wentz is the best fit for Los Angeles. We'll get to the third segment, which is my mock draft, next. Well, without further ado... My first ever Anthony Mana mock draft. Guys, this could be ugly as heck. It could be perfect. Let's see how many out of the 32 I actually get. But I went through 1 through 31. So here it is. And I have a caveat at the end that I want to share. So with the number one overall pick in the draft, I believe the quarterback from North Dakota State, Carson Wentz, is going to Los Angeles. I believe that. And I believe the Eagles were all in. Because they knew Goff was going to fall to them. Or maybe they felt it was going to be Wentz because they believed all the hype and went, ooh, we can get Wentz. Well, now you have to take the second choice out of the two that you really wanted. Because I think, obviously, then um, Jared Goff out of Cal goes to Philadelphia. The San Diego Chargers shock everybody at number three. They stay put and they draft the defensive end out of Ohio State, Joey Bosa. This is going to bolster their defense, which was abysmal last year. And although they need help on their offensive line, that team was so bad, they need help everywhere. It's the only top five pick or top three pick to stay put so far. They were that bad to begin with. They didn't trade up. They just were there, slotted as it was. And I think Joey Bosa is going to help their defense a lot. Now, I've been saying for the better part of th three months that the Dallas Cowboys at number four are going to take tailback Ezekiel Elliott out of Ohio State. And I believe that genuinely. I think that's going to be the route they go. And I think he's going to make a huge impact. A huge impact in Dallas right away. Um, but that's who I see Dallas taking at four. Uh, Jacksonville at five, I, I agree with what the experts are saying. I think the DB out of Florida State, Jalen Ramsey, he's there. You bolster your defense. You've already been bolstering your offense and see what you can do. So I think Jalen Ramsey goes to Jacksonville. Baltimore, uh, the D, I think they get the defensive end out of Clemson, Shaq Lawson. Because, again... Uh, Suggs isn't getting any younger and that defense is getting older and they need to refresh it with some fresh faces and why not take advantage with a top 5 pick right now, a top 10 pick and insert somebody of that caliber Shaq Lawson's there, I think they take him now, a lot of people are talking about this guy slipping but I think if the 49ers are sitting at 7 and they go okay, our quarterback was taken our offensive line we're not going to take a lineman this early where is the other position that we are woefully struggling in? Well, linebacker. 
right? I mean, they lost two to retirement, one to free agency. Who do they have? So I think they're going to spend this time to get a hometown boy in UCLA linebacker Miles Jack. I think he goes at number seven to the 49ers. Uh, the Cleveland Browns, I think at number eight, the Cleveland Browns stay put because they realize as he's slipping that he's there. And I think they're going to get Laramie Tun Tunzel out of, old, out of Ole Miss. I think they're going to protect their investment in RG3, and they're going to try to build their team from the O-line. That's a smart thing to do. And it being at eight, if he falls to him, why wouldn't you take him? So Laramie, Tun La uh, Laramie Tunzel out of uh, Ole Miss, uh, I think he goes to Cleveland. Uh, at number nine, Tampa Bay. Why not? He's sitting there, the DB out of Florida. I think they're going to get Vernon Hargreaves. And I think that's going to piss off the Giants at number 11, at number 10. I think the Giants are going to go, okay, well, we're going to take the next DB on our board because we desperately need a DB. And I actually think this DB out of Ohio State, Eli Apple, is a better fit. He's tall like they like traditionally, and he's an athlete. Eli Apple will tremendously improve that defense from day one, especially going up against Odell Beckham Jr. every day. That'll be a good fit for him. The Chicago Bears at 11, I think they do get, because I think he'll be the best one available for him, but I think they get the offensive tackle out of Notre Dame, uh, Ronnie Stanley. Uh, again, to solidify that O-line and help that football team as they move forward. With the moves they already made this offseason, why not bolster your O-line? So number 12, the New Orleans Saints. What does that mean? Well, the Saints are sitting there going, did this really just happen? Did this really just happen? He fell in our lap. I don't think they're gonna. I don't. I think they'll turn that card in within freaking seconds of them being on the clock. They're gonna draft quarterback out of Memphis, Paxton Lynch, because he can learn under Drew Brees for a couple more seasons, get seasoned by one of the best, and be coached by Sean Payton. Paxton Lynch may come out of this thing one of the best quarterbacks we've seen in a long time. And he could even be better than the two guys that went one and two, as much as that pains me to say, being a Ram fan. Only because of the situation. Number 13, the Miami Dolphins. Defensive end out of Clemson, Kevin Dodd. They're going to continue to bolster that D-line because it was so bad last year. they got to help Sue somewhere, and why not get yourself better on the outside? The Oakland Raiders... We'll take linebacker out of Alabama, Reggie Ragland, if he's there. They've made that very clear already, and why wouldn't they? He's the best linebacker, even better than Miles Jack, on the board. So I think it's going to be either Miles Jack going to Oakland and Reggie Ragland going to San Francisco, or Miles Jack going to San Francisco like I have here and Reggie Ragland going to Oakland. Tennessee, sitting at 15, they missed out on everyone. But they're still going to take an O-lineman, particularly the one out of Michigan State. Um, they're going to take Jack Conklin because I think he's not as good as Tunzel, but he's good enough to protect that and bolster that offensive line. And he's a first-round talent, so you take him. The Detroit Lions at 16, I think they're going to take the defensive tackle out of Alabama, Jaron Reed. Uh, they need to improve their D-line. They can't rely on um, Haloti um, forever. They need to bring somebody in to help them, so I think that would be a good move. The Atlanta Falcons, sitting at 17, will probably take the linebacker out of Georgia, Leonard Floyd, because, again, the defense is what their head coach's M.O. is, and they've got to get better on that side of the ball, so go get the next best linebacker on the board. Indianapolis, I think, will follow suit. They're going to get the Ohio State linebacker, Darren Lee, uh, because I think they kind of view him a lot like a Quentin Coriot that type of talent, um, and they haven't had that in a long, long time. So I think they'll jump all over that opportunity to, again, bolster their defense, which was – it struggled at times last year, not just the offense. The Buffalo Bills at number 19, I think they're going to reach. I think they're going to take defensive tackle from Alabama, Ashawn Robinson, and try to continue to bolster that side of the ball that was so costly to them down the stretch when they needed it. Um, at number 20, the New York Jets. I think here they take quarterback out of Michigan State, Connor Cook. Um, I, I do think they take Connor Cook right here. I think they look at the situation and they go, he can't be worse than Fitzpatrick. He's not going to be as much as Fitzpatrick. And we give ourselves a chance to really groom him. So 
why not reach here and take him? We've missed out on all these other quarterbacks. So I think Connor Cook goes right then and there. Which brings me to the Washington Redskins. Uh, they are going to jump all over center from Alabama, Ryan Kelly. I told you guys he's the best offensive lineman in the draft. I don't care what they say about Tunzel. He's the best offensive lineman in the draft. And they need a help at center. And if he's there, he gone. I don't know why they're talking like he's going to go all the way to the second round, late third round. Horse crap. He's gone. Redskins are there, and he's still on the board. They're picking him. Houston at number 22. I think they take the offensive tackle out of Ohio State, Taylor Decker. Uh, again, to bolster that offensive line and help uh, their investment that they just made in quarterback Brock Osweiler. Then we get a rash of wide receivers. Um, well, maybe not a rash of wide receivers, but the two top receivers come off the board. I think the Vikings take the wide receiver out of TCU, Josh Doxson, to help their speed. And with Adrian running the ball, that's only going to help their offense tremendously. Uh, I think the Cincinnati Bengals will then take offensive uh, a wide receiver out of Ole Miss, um, Laquan Treadwell, who everyone's been talking about. Imagine him and A.J. Green with Andy Dalton. Yeah, Bengal fans, you can book your tickets to the Super Bowl. I think you might be going. He, he's, he can make that much of an impact. The Pittsburgh Steelers, they have him drafting the DB out of Houston, William Jackson III, and I believe that he's going to be the only one left on the board. I think if Eli Apple is still on the board, they'll take Eli Apple, but I think he's going right away. So I think they'll end up taking the kid from Houston. Seattle leaves an interesting void here. What do they do? Well, they piss everyone off. Um, by putting themselves right back in the playoff picture by drafting the tailback out of Alabama, uh, Patrick Henry. Um, or, sorry, Derrick Henry. They draft Derrick Henry out of Alabama, and he'll probably start right away and push Rawls um, and keep Rawls as a backup because he's, he's a stud. Guys, Henry's a stud. Uh, after that, we got Green Bay. I think they're going to take defensive tackle out of Baylor, Andrew Billingsley. I think they need a – their offensive line took a hit this year. Their quarterback, Rodgers, really took a beating. They need to clean that up. I think they're going to go with a lineman here. And the, the, the tackle out of Baylor is probably their best bet. Um, if it's not an offensive lineman, I think it's going to be this defensive tackle out of Baylor because they got to look at this and go, well, we got to put pressure up the middle like the Packers, like the Broncos did. But I wouldn't be surprised they went offensive line here to protect Rodgers, but I got him picking a defensive tackle out of Baylor. Kansas City, I think, is going to take the wide receiver out of Notre Dame, Will Fuller, and really solidify that side of the ball with Jeremy Macklin and everybody else struggling last year. I think they need a bona fide one, and I think he could be it. Um, which means the Arizona Cardinals, sitting at 29, are going, what do we do? Do we trade down? Do we trade out? But the defensive end out of Oregon, DeForest Buckner, is going to be there, and they need a pass rusher. And I think that they're just not going to be able to pass up DeForest Buckner. I think they're going to take him and run to the hills ecstatic about it. So the Arizona Cardinals at 29 will take the Oregon defensive end, DeForest Buckner. Carolina at 30 is going to go for the DB Miami out of Miami, Artie Burns. Losing Josh Norman, they've got to address it. And Artie Burns is the next best DB. Unless they trade up to get, you know, uh, Jackson or um, – I don't know who else they can get because I don't think they're going to trade all the way up to ten. They got to get a D, they got to get a DB and RT Burns is probably the best opportunity they have right there because he is a good DB. And the Denver Broncos, I think they're going to again try to keep bolstering their old line. Uh, I think they're going to take the offensive tackle out of Texas A&M, Jermaine uh, Afidi. If they don't take Afidi, um, I think they're going to end up trading out. And don't be surprised, guys, if right here is where that trade with the 49ers happens. If this is where they get um, Colin Kaepernick or perhaps Sam Bradford and the Eagles come back into the first round to get somebody they really want. That wouldn't surprise me at all. But here's the Arizona option. I've been hearing this a lot out here. Arizona's talking about packaging Malcolm Floyd, their wide receiver, and a few picks, specifically their one and three from this year's draft, to either Baltimore or Cleveland to jump up and get quarterback Paxton Lynch. I don't know if they would do that. I think that would be bold. 
mean, that would be dumb. See if you got a pass rusher that falls to you, trade out, deal with it from there. But that is an option that's been bantered around here. So, you Cardinal fans, I recognize that it's there. And that's it for Anthony Mann and LA Rams Central. My first ever mock draft. We'll see how it goes. I won't run a show this weekend. I will run a show next week. I'll have a check mark with the first round. How many of these I got right? How many of these I got wrong? I'll have to wait and see. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And that's it for LA Rams Central, the 13th episode. We'll see you guys in a little over a week for the post-draft wrap-up show.